Hello everybody, you're listening to Wall Street Blues. I'm your host, Pastor Alfred. Wall Street Blues is a series of broadcasts that briefly highlights certain portions of books that I've written as well as books that I'm currently writing that relate to the world of investing and the stock market. To get more information about topics covered in this series, kindly go to pastoralfred.com and make sure you subscribe. When you subscribe, you will be getting connected to a lot of different projects that I am involved in. It's good for year nine to get connected. My information is on the site so that you can contact me as well. Today, I would like to talk to you about trends. Let us first of all go to the scriptures and look at the book of Genesis, chapter 8, verse 22. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Praise the Lord. You see, there are seasons, and one thing is for sure about the stock markets, which you must understand, is that there are seasons also in the stock markets. There are trends, there are times in the stock markets. So when it comes to investing in stocks, you have to, in addition to doing your due diligence and understanding the meaning of margin of safety and doing all your calculations and making sure that the company you are investing in through the stock markets is actually a good one you know when people use words like i invest in the stock markets i have a problem with such kinds of words because you see you are looking at the wrong thing and you are phrasing your sentences wrongly you are phrasing your sentences in a way that is actually showing a flaw in the way you think you see, you invest in companies. It is not the stock market itself that you are investing in. The stock market is the market it is the marketplace. It is the ground on which all investments are made. However, when you are looking at it from the perspective of I am investing in the stock market, what does that mean? Are you just taking pride in investing in, in companies through the stock markets? Or are you looking at the companies themselves? It is one thing for somebody to invest with his eyes on the company in particular versus somebody whose eyes is on the stock markets and that is the phrase they are using i invest in the stock markets it is those kind of people that always find themselves in trouble and you see when you find people who are skeptical about investing in the stock market and people who think investing in the stock market is risky you see what their problem is is that their eyes is on the stock market, not on the companies. It is not about the stock market. It's about the companies. Let me ask you a question. All these people that are skeptical about investing in companies via the stock market as in investing in stocks, do they believe, for example, a company they always use, like let's say Apple or let's say Google. A lot of people use Google products. Android, they search with Google and they use Gmail and all of that. Does the person who believe that it is risky to invest in the stock markets believe that Google has a chance of the, it as a company shutting down tomorrow? You see, these people use brands daily. Brands that are traded on the stock market. A lot of people use AT&T for their internet connections. A lot of people go into Starbucks. And they are confident that their great-grandchildren and their great-grandchildren will still have Starbucks to go to. A lot of people patronize McDonald's. But these people will say that it's risky to invest in the stock market. What is that? If you believe that McDonald's is going to be here tomorrow, guess what? That means its stocks are going to be here tomorrow as well. You see, your eye is on the stock market, not on the companies. There are companies that you already have faith in. Why don't you invest in the stocks of those particular companies? If you are a big McDonald's buff and you are sure that McDonald's is going to keep spreading and going to keep growing and is going to make more profits, rather than be 
a Yahoo or a silly person, why don't you invest in that company that you believe will grow and advance? You see, let me give you an example. There are people who, like for example in Nigeria, there are people who criticize um, someone like Mr. Aliko Dangote and they say things like, um, this man stole money, this man is making all the money, look at how his cement company is doing very well, he's doing deals with the government, the go politicians are helping him out, they are making the um, roads cleared for him and all those kind of nonsense. You see, the problem with the people who are saying all these things and the people who say all these kind of things about every successful chairman and CEO, they say the same thing about the founder of um, or the chairman of Fort Oyo, Mr. Femi Otedola. They say the same thing about even CEOs and managing directors, you see. When people say these kind of things, you have to understand something very important. If they have so much faith, if you have so much faith that the government is helping Aliko Dangote and his company is only going to get bigger and bigger. If you believe that, why don't you buy shares in his company? His companies are publicly traded. Also, Mr. Femini Otedola, his companies are publicly traded. Why don't you buy shares in his company? If you believe that there is this engine that is working behind him, that is making it so certain that he will keep advancing, rather than gossip, why don't you put your money there? Because you are saying that this machine which is his company because of the government and because of other factors it will keep growing and increasing and you say that it is unfair okay why don't you tell all the poor people like you to invest in it you see it does not take a million dollars to become an investor as far as you have been granted access as far as you have been registered as an investor you can invest even five dollars one dollar two dollars you see one naira, two naira, three naira, it depends. You see, 200 naira, 100 naira, whatever. You don't have to wait till you have a hundred million. If you are waiting till you have a hundred million to become an investor, you will never have a hundred million. And if a hundred million ever comes to you, you would never invest it because you've never believed in investing. If you could not invest 10,000 when you had 20,000, what makes you think that you are going to invest a hundred million when you have two hundred million? You would not. You see, because you have no belief in investing. Rather, you rather be on the opposite side and complain that all these other people who own these companies are making money. Why don't you put your money there? Why don't you tell other poor people, put your money there, it will grow. You see? It is the craziness and this is a poverty mentality that is rampant all over Africa and it is always predominant in poor people everywhere. It's not just limited to Africa. There is a strong hatred for the rich and when you see people who hate the rich talk, a lot of all they say, if they could actually let go of their hatred, they will see that what they have before them is the answer out of their own poverty. You see, their hatred is their own destruction. If you have so much faith that politicians are helping Apple, for example, or that you believe that the CIA and the FBI, you know, a lot of people love conspiracy theories, whether they are proven or not. If you have so much faith that the FBI and the CIA is helping Facebook and is secretly funding such companies and such evidence has come out, if you have that much faith that there is so much power behind that engine, why don't you invest in Google? Now, in your lifetime, the increments from that investment may be little. However, think about it as per your great-grandchildren's lifetime, how much will the value be? You see, let us look at a lot of companies in Nigeria, for example, a lot of banks in Nigeria. When you go to every bank, 
a lot of them in Nigeria, they have somewhere on one of their walls the articles of association and the documents, some of the documents that show their certification and when they were registered and the value of the company when it was registered. All the banks in Nigeria that are worth hundreds of billions of dollars, they were all registered with less than or around 2,000 Naira only. Let me explain. 2,000 Naira is the same thing with actually two dollars it will be around around two dollars two or three dollars what three dollars is now is what the whole company was registered for but not today it was registered that way like in the 70s or 80s for a lot of nigerian banks you see imagine if someone had invested only one dollar that is half of that entire company that is half of that Nigerian bank. Think about it. You see, the funny thing is that I know there are a lot of people who want to talk inflation and be like, um, well, 2,000 naira may have been a lot of money that time. That may be so, but let us not act like there were not people who had hundreds and thousands at that time. There were a lot of people you see who had who had that kind of money but you see these are things that you have to think about these are things that you have to consider you see you have to be wise you have to be wise when you let go of hatred for the rich you will begin to see things that you've never seen before don't join those who are always complaining you see there are even political parties that are just running on the engine of hatred against the rich. All they think about is taxing the rich, taxing the rich, taxing the rich. They do not see that this, your hatred of the rich, is going to kill the poor. When you raise taxes on the rich, let me tell you what you have done. You have chased them away. You have chased their money away to other nations that are tax havens, other nations that we love the money, that you obviously do not like, you see. When you raise the taxes from the rich, the existing companies that are in that country, they would have to increase the prices of their goods. They will have to lay off workers. So who is suffering now? It is the poor. You see, even if you succeed in making certain rich people in your country poor, guess what? Now you have increased the number of poor people in your nation and you have made other nations richer. You have to understand the politics of um, I would say um, let's put it this way if two countries are fighting a war let us say there are three powerful countries there is A, B and C C is the least powerful country if A and B start fighting a war, C is now the most powerful country by not being involved. You understand? So in the same way, there are war powers, there are nations that are running things because of the wealth that they have. You see, when a nation subscribes to idiotic economic policies that makes them poorer, they are automatically making other nations richer and more powerful and they are putting those nations in positions where they will end up calling the shots and deciding what happens in other nations look at america america calls the shots in so many different nations only america can invade any country they want and come up with any excuse and get away with it no other nation can do that america can america tries to impose its beliefs on everybody else look at the lgbt thing it America comes with the LGBT, whatever, to Africa and tries to get them to accept a completely different ideology from every existing ideology in African culture. Why? Because America is more powerful. So you see, when you 
put yourself in a position where you are fighting against the rich in your own country, you would make other nations automatically by default more powerful and they would now be able to come into your country and call the shots. They would now become the world powers. They would now tell you how to live and what to do. They will now tell you what is right and what is wrong. You see, because they are more powerful thanks to the rich that you have destroyed. You must understand that the rich and the poor, you see, are all people and are all citizens. The difference is that the rich succeeded in doing what the poor failed to do. So it is like everybody is running in a race, but you are punishing those who cross the finishing line and rewarding those who fall along the way. When you do that, you create a situation where nobody crosses the finishing line. It's now a whole bunch of losers on the track field. That is what you do when you fight against the rich. The rich are people who are from the poor, who succeeded in becoming what other poor people wish they were. But unfortunately, poor people have ignorance. And it is because of their ignorance dominating better judgment and, and being so prevalent that they never actually got to hold on to knowledge, wisdom, and to God, they found themselves continuing in their poverty. You see, so that is something that you have to understand. So back to what I'm talking to you about. I'm talking about trends. When you notice there are trends in the stock market, there are times when there is a rush and people are buying a certain share. You see, you can see that surge. People are buying a certain share in a certain company. Remember, it is not about investing in the stock market. It is about investing in companies that are traded on the stock market. You see, if your eyes is on the company. You are not, it's not a matter of, I invest in the stock market. You see, because when people say investing in the stock market is risky, that is madness. What are you saying? If you are looking at the company, can you say investing in a company that you always use is risky? You see, can you say investing in government bonds is risky? As far as the government will continue taking taxes, the government will have the money to pay for the bonds. You can make money from the bonds. You see, can you say investing in Windows, Microsoft is risky? Can you say investing in Google is risky? Can you say investing in a lot of other companies that are used every day? Oracle and the rest of them. Can you say it is risky? You see, however, there is such a thing as buying a company's share when it is overvalued at the time. So that is something that you will watch out for and you would avoid when you understand the meaning of the margin of safety, which is something I'll talk about on a completely different day. You see, when you understand the meaning of the margin of safety, then you avoid that problem. So when you invest in companies, and always be mindful of trends, even though Trends are not number one, but you should also be aware of what trend is actually in play so that you can ride the wave of certain trends and you can, in that way, make instantaneous profits. You can make a lot of money in just a day as opposed to investing based on your knowledge and based on the margin of safety and based on all your calculations and then having to wait two years or three years before the share price appreciates to a level that authenticates your calculations or your projections of future revenue of the company you see so that is one interesting thing about trends but even as you are looking at trends make sure that the margin of safety comes first do not invest at above a company's value even though the trend is still going up, even though many people are rushing towards it. So you have to cash into that rush at the beginning. And when it is, most importantly, it does not even matter whether it is at the beginning or, or not. What matters is that, is it, be, is it within the margin of safety? You see, is the stock on a, on a price that has gone over its true value. Is the company overvalued? If it is overvalued, do not buy at that price, even though 
the trend is still going in that direction. So that is what I would wanted to talk to you about today and make clear to you today. If you are listening to this broadcast and you have not given your life to Christ, I would like you to go to pastoralfred.com and click the salvation prayer link in the main menu. When you do a page will come out that has the prayer of salvation and also there is a prayer there for you to say if you have not received the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is important for you to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, it is important for you to walk with the Holy Spirit, to learn about the Holy Spirit and have a relationship with Him is of extreme importance. So that is it for today. Thank you and God bless you.